Hello, hello, hello to everybody. Welcome back to Venture Starters. Hello. Great to see everybody. If you're planning on pitching tonight, go and digitally raise your hand. Go to the reaction button and pick the hand raise. Real important to get you yourself in the queue early. We have a very busy event tonight. A lot's going to happen tonight. So I may not be able to get to everybody in the queue, but I want you to know that those that we were unable to get into the queue to speak on March 8th, there was like a dozen people. All of those that I could see that were in the waiting room starting five minutes ahead of time or earlier, I did let in tonight so that they could um, raise their hand and get in the queue. And I promise again, those that don't make it in tonight, we'll take a list again and we will try and do the same thing where we let you in next time. Um, but you have to arrive at least five minutes ahead of time because there's too many people in the queue, like 130 people are in the room right now. And I can't go through the list that quick if you're all arriving one, two minutes at a time. So if we miss you and we can't get you, you know, uh, in tonight's event and we put you on the list, please arrive at least five minutes ahead of time. The next opportunity for you will be two weeks from today. Next week, all women founders, if we have enough of them, that will be spectacular. That's my hope. And although if you're a women founder, that's a different story. We'll obviously want to try and get you in the queue next week. But for everybody else, you're going to have to wait two weeks if you don't make it into tonight's event. So, and since we already have 26 people in the queue, that's probably about enough to get through tonight. Everybody else who's getting in the queue now by raising their hand, it's kind of 50-50 um, as to whether we might get to you or not. We have a big event tonight. There's a lot going on. So um, I want tonight to be an opportunity for us to learn, find some avenues for education that's free so that it'll help all of us out. And we're gonna get started um, uh, right away after I finish up a couple of opening remarks. Um, AJ Mirabadini is here and he is going to present the Investability Workshop, which I encourage all of you to sign up to attend. It's going to be great because not all of you are as investable as you may think you are. There's a lot that goes into a startup or early stage company that wants to be invested in. And this is a free workshop. AJ did it a year ago and 2,500 people signed up for it. AJ is very prolific involved with the New Mexico uh, Angels group and he devised this um, and we're gonna hear from him in a minute. At the end of the program, Professor Dave, who I hope will become a regular, is going to present the first of what I, again, hope will be many topics because he's a real professor of entrepreneurship at the university level. Tonight is all about how to do elevator pitches. And the reason why Professor Dave is at the end is not because he's not important. I actually would prefer him at the beginning, but I want to have a Q&A. And there may be many of you who have questions after he presents. And the only way to really do that, I think, is at the end of the program. So at least for tonight, if you all stay around, you're going to have a chance to get some really great education from Professor Dave. And he'll introduce himself and his background, I'm sure. I'm not, I don't know if we have uh, Anshuman um, Sinha in our audience tonight, but there's two events I want you all to know about. One is called Practice Your Pitch Event. It's uh, March 23rd. I'm sure that somebody um, from his group will put it in the chat. Practice Your Pitch Event. It's coming up soon. And for some reason, we don't get it into the... Uh, chat, open up your chat, by the way, if you don't know how we operate here. That's how everybody communicates with each other, but um, we'll try and get that information out to you. Another very important event from um, Thai Angels, who we are aligned with. We haven't fully aligned yet. I'm, I, it's my fault for because we just haven't had enough time to put it all together, but the Thai Angels group is they're worldwide and they have their Southern California group is doing an event called the Investor Summit on April 6th. 
I highly recommend for at least especially Southern California startups, Orange County um, startups for sure, if any of you are here, you need to be um, aligned with the Thai angels. Um, and certainly for the rest of you, the Thai global angels, because I think they have um, uh, char uh, chapters uh, in like 20 or 30 different cities and multiple countries. They're a really large organization. Also, just for those of you who uh, don't know, I was an investor on the investor panel of Startup Bright last year, much of last year. They have an event on Thursday. And if anybody's here from Startup Bright, it's a fun event. It's also a great place to practice. And there's some great um, investors that are on the panel. Let's see how we're doing right now. 175. I'll get started on opening remarks. I'm sure we'll have um, over 200 by the time I finish. So we're the venture starters. For those of you who haven't been to one of our previous events, we're a community of startup founders, investors, and people who would like to become part of a startup team. We're also a community of service providers. I want to just point out that I don't know all the people that are part of our community. We've had over 10,000 people that have signed up to be to register for one of the events since we started this in August of last year. And um, so please be cautious. If somebody offers you something, you know, treat everybody as if they are a total stranger and do due diligence like you would if you met somebody at a trade show or even at a bar. So I just want, I, I, and people who might claim that they're affiliated with me or know me, take that with a grain of salt does not mean that I'm representing that they are exactly who they say and that their money is what it is and whatever it is that you're talking about. So just, you know, take, um, just be cautious is basically my message. If, if everybody will stay on mute, the event will go smoother. Um, only turn on your turn off your mute uh, when you're going to speak. Um, I do like to have questions between each of those founders who pitch tonight because we have so much going on. I'm going to probably have to limit the questions to maybe one and move everything along. And in case we don't get any questions, I'm just going to move us along really quickly. But I personally like the question portion. And we'll have to see how that goes. If anybody in our audience wants to help me ask questions, I would appreciate it if you actually have very smart, good questions to ask of whoever is the founder. Um, we had a great event last Saturday. I put it in the chat, and I'm not sure if everybody will be able to see it because I put it in before the event started. So to my um, to my team, if you can uh, copy that and. Uh, put it back up. There's a link to the video. It's an unlisted video on YouTube. We have almost 1,000 people that went and watched it um, when I sent emails out to everybody to go and look at it. Um, I think it's really good advice. It's basically how to leverage LinkedIn so that you can find people to join your team who personally know investors if that's what you're hunting for. But in most cases, you not only need investors, but you need other help. And my philosophy on startups is um, basically if you're out pitching total strangers to try and find investors, better to find somebody to join your team who can open up warm introductions. It's easier to get investors through warm introductions than through pitching total strangers. The reason for venture starters, and I hope you all agree, is if you keep coming back and you become known and people see you often enough and you engage with others, then this community is not a bunch of strangers anymore to you. But you have to put in the work. Networking is key. The more you perfect your networking skills, the better chances you will be to find the people you need and also raise the money that you need to raise. Um, so I, I have a link to the video of Saturday's event. We had 250 people attend on a Saturday. It went a little long. Apologies to everybody. I originally planned it for an hour, but it ended up going almost three hours, a lot because just the conversation was so good and it really uh, was uh, it was very useful. Before we get to the queue of people who are going to pitch tonight, the first person that I want to um, present 
is AJ, who is going to take the center stage for 10 or 15 minutes. I know that may sound like a long time for our event, but I really want you to hear what we, I'm going to become part of this event. Uh, this workshop is, I'm, I'm going to definitely put my fingerprints on it, and you will see me at least in video format there. And I want you to listen to what AJ is presenting with regard to the investability workshop that will be April 22nd, it would appear based on the background that he has, which is great. And then after that, we'll get started with our queue and all the founders will pitch. And then we're gonna have Professor Dave teach us how to do elevator pitches at the very end of the program. And since we're already up to about 200 people in the room, I think it's time to get started. So um, AJ, are you available to kick us off? I'm, I'm here ready to go, Mark. Take it away. Wonderful. Well, first, thank you for having me. Um, I've been here many times. I've been a moderator at different times. As a general introduction, I'm a serial entrepreneur who has uh, been focused as an investor for the last 10 or 15 years. I am an angel investor. I'm a member of the New Mexico Angels. And uh, we spend quite a bit of time working with people just like you. Um, trying to help them become investable because a lot of the people that apply to us for funding, while they have great ideas, their businesses aren't quite ready to be invested in yet. So we work together to be able to evolve your businesses to get to that point. And frankly, as an angel investor who probably looks at over 100 pitches a week um, in-depthly, and uh, sits on a lot of desks at a lot of boards evaluating opportunities. Um, it's been frustrating to see the madness, the crazy uh, merry-go-round of pitching after pitching after pitching after pitching, and people don't seem to be able to find the, the sweet spot of what they need to do to be able to get invested in. There's a real disconnect, I think, in our circles. There's a disconnect from really what you as founders, entrepreneurs, think we as investors are looking for. And what we're looking for as investors somehow isn't getting through to many of the people that are starting their businesses. And we decided after much frustration with the whole process of trying to vet through so many pitch decks and so many pitches and so many offers the due diligence that goes into it, we all decided, I'm the founder of a company called Entrepreneurs Rx, where we focus on mentoring and growing startups. We decided that, you know what, let's put something together where we can actually help you founders truly understand what we're looking for, to really break down the barriers, to kind of get rid of the mystery of what investors are looking for in your business and your ideas in order for us to want to invest in you. And, and this wisdom isn't really just for us as angel investors. I think the, the wisdom that we've developed and the, and the presentations that we're working on are, are universal and they're featuring some, some really clever fund managers, investors, people like Mark, a few other fund managers, other, some VCs, and, and we've gathered together to really develop a protocol for how best you can figure to make your businesses more investable by an outside investor. Uh, we've broken down years of research and we've identified seven critical areas that we think would dramatically improve your chances of getting invested in. There is no guarantee in getting investments. I want to be real clear about that. Mark is very clear about that. And I really want to be clear about that. We don't have a guarantee of investment. The investment is worthy of your business and the brilliance of your business and the business model that goes into it. But there's a lot of variables that go into this that I think would really help you cut to the chase and save some of your time. And instead of just doing pitch after pitch to really focus on developing your business in a way that we as investors can can really dig into it and be able to make a good judgment of things. Certainly things like how to create a pitch deck that that really effectively connects with investors. How do you communicate with investors. Many of you, I haven't seen this group's pitches, but the many pitches that I see 
are really talking to the investor from the from the founder's perspective without considering what an investor considers and needs as a part of your deal to want to invest in your business. So we have broken down all of those key measures, key words, key amounts of information, the types of information, the sequence of information, how to how to cut to the chase, how to identify a fund that is interested in your business other than other businesses. Each investor has their own portfolio, has their own appetite for the kind of work that they do. And we want to help you understand that and really align yourself with investors that are more interested in your specific business ideas than generic business ideas. And 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 this is a this is a really a, a, a work of love. It's an effort of, of love for for the ecosystem and really the the small business entrepreneurial startup is an ecosystem that's defined of investors, that's defined of founders, and is defined of defined by the executives that can help you. And this is a this is an effort to bring us all together. So then we can collectively facilitate this whole process and cut to the chase. So there's not so much waste of time in just trying to pitch. Because as so many of you are pitching, you really are taking your eyes off your business. And 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 that is counterintuitive for you and for us as investors. So on on April 22nd, uh, this is a Saturday for three hours, we're going to have a free workshop. Um, the, the, the link is on on right behind me on my background. Um, you can register for this again, free of charge, three hours uh, featuring speakers like Mark and others of his stature. And we're going to break down for you the critical steps that you need to make sure your business is the most investable. Leading that, we're going to have boot camps that will actually work directly with you into evaluating your business model, your, your, your pitches, your, your financial metrics, your exit strategies, and everything else that goes into it to become the most investable. People like us, people like Mark, we're part of a network of investors. And and. One investor is very different than the other. And being able to connect you directly with an investor that's interested in your niche and into your sector becomes a really viable and valuable service to you and to us as investors, because we don't like the the the, the craziness of all of the back and forths. And we would much rather cut to the chase, find the deals that we're interested in quickly, and get busy building your companies rather than pitch, 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 pitch. So I invite you to please join us again, April 22nd on a Saturday, three hours. You can join all of it or you can join some of it. It'll be recorded for you. And, and we're going to have four speakers that are all fund managers and very high-end investors that have shared their insights, their needs, their challenges as to what they come across your businesses. And we, we hope to really change the game. That's really the whole point of this thing. Mark started this. And I think the momentum he's created is is much appreciated by the rest of us in the investment field. But we want to we want to get it even more facilitated. And I really look forward to visiting with you. And I look forward to having Mark with us to be able to share this. And we'll see you on April 22nd. Thank you, AJ. And we definitely hope everybody will show up. Um, so for the founders that are about to pitch. It's very, very important that you only spend two minutes doing the elevator pitch. Please try, try to make it only two minutes. If you will do even a shorter pitch, you will be all of our collective heroes. We already have 37 people in the queue, which is more than we're going to be able to handle. So um, I would really love it if everybody can have touch points tonight where we can get to see as many people, hear from as many people as possible. Again, we're a networking uh, community. So the more opportunities that people just get to see you, even if it's for 20 seconds or, you know, a minute and a half, two minutes maximum, it's all good because that is how you build relationships in this community. So let's get started. The first in our queue is Thomas Hahn. It's hi. So uh, my name is Thomas Hahn. I'm a serial entrepreneur. I was the CEO and principal founder of six companies. I've raised funding from angels, VCs, and corporations. I have been judged at two investor pitch platforms. I'm currently active with US Angels. I have advised hundreds of CEOs of early stage companies. A few weeks ago on this uh, platform, I shared uh, 
with the uh, attendees that 90% of first-time startups fail and that most entrepreneurs are very smart people, but they just don't know how to build their startups to be successful. And I share that there are five major factors for building a successful startup. And most entrepreneurs think that the most important factor is the product. And I said, no, it's not the product. Out of the five important factors, the product is number three in the middle. The number one most important factors for a startup success is the quality of the team, a strong team. Most startups, especially first-time startups, will fail because most first-time startups do not have a strong team. And the reason they do not have a strong team is because most first-time startups do not know what makes up the strong team. So I'm going to define for you the skill sets that are required to have a strong team. Number one, the most important, the CEO should have management experience and business knowledge. Number two, the CTO should be an expert in the company's core technology. And also, very important, there should be an executive that understands the market and has proven experience of bringing in paying customers. Without these three skill sets in the top executive positions, you do not have a strong team. Now, most startups that do not have a strong team will be reluctant to, to reorganize. But however, if you want to be among the 10% of startups that succeed rather than the 90% that fail, you need to think about reorganizing your executive team. And this is extremely painful and unpleasant and difficult because to restructure the executive team in order to have a strong team, sometimes it involves one of the co-founders be removed from a key executive position. It typically would involve so, uh, several of the co-founders uh, reducing their equity position so that there would be enough equity to attract the necessary uh, skills. So I highly recommend that if you do not have a strong team, as I have defined, that you seriously consider reorganizing your company's executive staff so that you would have a strong team that's important for building a successful business and it's extremely important for attracting professional investors. So please go to chat to look up my name for my contact information. And if you're interested in um, reorganizing your executive team to, you know, to build for success and attract professional investors, uh, please contact me. I'll be happy to uh, be helpful. You. Thank you. Thanks, Thomas. Um, I also just want to point out for everybody who's going to pitch tonight, you have to have your camera on. Um, no avatars or anything else like that or blank screens, if that's the case. And if anybody's calling in internationally or your signal is bad, I'm going to cut you off and we're going to move on because it's very hard to keep hearing people. Thanks, Thomas, for getting us off to a good start, though, because this topic is dear to my heart. Again, those of you who want to hear my opinions on this, I share Thomas's. Watch the video of what we did last Saturday. Up next is Jean-Claude. Hello. Social network's purpose of connecting people together has failed. On both sides of the middle, content creators and viewers, it is darker and darker. Platforms have reinforced alienation and put new generation at risk, especially our youngsters who dream to become influencer, as one of my kids. Let me tell you a story tonight. A Swiss lovely YouTuber Mada Shu worked hard to provide daily material for her 150,000 subscribers on YouTube. She missed Christmas with her four kids last year due to intense pressure and nasty haters bullying. Indeed, she committed suicide December 22nd. She was feeling lost and lonely behind her camera. One of many stories. At Midfluencer, we really like to eradicate these stories. And doing what we do, is to bring people together, but we want to do it with a mission and purpose. And that mission is bringing together like many people who have communities and can locally be together to build a community. Because social media has created this environment of isolation, we need to break it down in a meaningful way at local level so people feel they can connect again. 
Our unique solution has a lot of differentiators, it uses emotional AI and logistical infrastructure to automatically organize micro VIP events in real life and priority musician this summer. We are, in fact, they are the hanging fruits as they are seeking for new revenues. Our online platform will enable genuine connections offline with their followers and also followers between themselves. It is all about belongingness against loneliness. So we validated the model last summer with good traction, but two minutes is too short to give uh, more details. So we are raising $250,000, half is committed. We have enough talent signatures to earn $750,000 between May and August with profit. And from there, scale a unicorn opportunity. One of the largest streaming firm senior sales and marketing executive confirmed yes, yesterday that she is joining us as co-CEO to complete a wonderful team. Now, maybe you will want also to join us with a teeny but highly lucrative ticket and more important, make our kids a better world where people meet again. So I'm Jean-Claude Arton. Connect with me. Thank you for your attention. Thanks and appreciate it. Meet John Claude in the uh, ch chat. By the way, my team is basically saying we're not going to have time for questions after each one of the presenters if we're going to get everybody that we can in. So I apologize, even though that's my favorite part of the program. I think we're just going to plow forward. Uh, up next is Stash, who's going to figure out a way to digitally get us all those pastries. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Uh, good evening. My name is Stash Harrison. I'm the CEO of Market Intent, an AI and data intelligence company helping startup and brands grow. Our data is packaged in an easy to use personalized dashboard for every brand or company. We offer a lot of data customized to everyone, things such as we identify a brand's most valuable customer, pricing of all customer in a vertical. For example, if you are a startup bear company, we would show you the prices of hundreds of bear in every market in America. We currently have one startup paying customer, a supermarket soon to come on, a import export company, and potentially a few ad agencies that are white label solution. Our ask is, we're a team of 12 people, mostly developers. Ask is advisors, uh, advisory board, looking to put that together and raise in capital. Um, I will paste my information in the chat. Um, wish there were some questions, but uh, please hit me up in the chat. How am I in the two minutes there, Mark? Um, can't hear you. I think you're on mute. My gosh, I didn't get a chance to thank you properly. Thank you. That's exactly what I'd like to see, short. Um, yeah, meet Stash in uh, the chat. Up next is Yanni. And I just met Yanni and his wife, um, his wife especially uh, for the first time. I think it was yesterday or day before. Wonderful people. This is a great company. I'm going to try and get involved. Uh, let's hear from Yanni. Thank you, Mark. And uh, hello, everybody. You know, after transportation, hotels and multifamily units are the highest draw on the power grid That, with this jolting fact. A typical 100-room property consumes more energy than over a 1,000 homes use in one year. Just multifamilies nationwide spend $70 billion annually to upgrade and renovate. There are very few options that don't require expensive and extensive renovations until now. I'm Yanni Daros, a prop tech innovation company, Start Plus family of intelligent automation and robotic systems, reducing energy costs and lowering carbon emissions with plug and play technology. We finally help properties step into the 21st century with a unified platform. Our path of patented enterprise system is an affordable retrofitable uh, solution that can install in 60 minutes or less with no downtime and no loss re revenue. We leverage our AI to control the mesh network, energy management system, lighting controls, occupancy sensors, saving up to 40% on energy costs. With the costs skyrocketing, owners are frantically searching for solutions to implement cost-cutting me measures to survive and compete. We're generating revenue where our SaaS creates revenue in perpetuity, 
We have a fat global pipeline and a deep innovation road roadmap that will propel us to be a leader in commercial automation. To date, we raised $2.7 million. We have a pre-A series open for $3 million. We have half a million committed with a large Arizona family fund uh, as a lead investor. Easy deal to get into. CERC is more than an AI technology. It's a solution for a sustainable future. I'm going to put my contact information in the chat. So if you're interested, let's connect and create a greener and healthier world for all. Thank you, Yanni. Really like this one. To the investors in the group, please take a look. Up next, Mohammed. Yeah, thank you, Mark. Can everyone hear me fine? Yes. All right. So according to research, over 60% of cloud adoption projects end up in failure. These failures may be attributed to exceeding budgets, falling behind schedules, or experiencing scalability or security problems. I am Muhammad Tahir, CEO and founder of Kaizen Cloud. We just rebranded our company name from Creative Logics to Kaizen Cloud. With the rich experience of over 20 years in the software industry, I have co-founded a fintech company that went public and also served as a senior solutions architect at Amazon, where I assisted their partners in designing cloud native solutions. So from my observations, the primary cause of failure in cloud adoption projects is the absence of skilled cloud professionals within the teams. And that's the reason behind establishing Kaizen Cloud was to serve as the cloud center of excellence for these businesses seeking to maximize the benefits of the cloud, but don't have the resources and the financial to back it up. Our turnkey solution accelerator enables the creation of high quality cloud infrastructures in under 10 minutes. And best of all, use of accelerator by organizations will result in numerous advantages for them, including quicker time to market, cost savings of up to 80%, and enhanced developer productivity. These benefits will give them a competitive advantage in the market. Accelerator is available on a subscription-based model currently. And with Accelerator, we aim to revolutionize the $100 billion consulting industry and are actively seeking to raise $1 million. And by the way, I'm also looking for a co-founder CMO if you want to join my team. Thank you for listening. And if you have any questions, I know we are not allowed to have questions, but I'm reach me sorry out about question. that. But I want to point out that you did exactly what I'd like to see our founders do. If you need somebody to join your team, please make that also part of your pitch. The network that we're creating is designed also to fit everybody together that needs to like come together. And so I, you know, that was a great pitch because you at least got that in in the end. Thank you so much. Thank Up you, next everyone. is Rajiv. Uh, thank you so much, Mark. Great to be here. Um, I'll keep this super brief. Maybe this will be the briefest pitch of the evening. Uh, <laughs> I know, right? Uh, yeah, so this we basically help companies do their product launch better, faster, smoother. How do we do this? We do this in three ways. One, we can help you be seen extremely prominently on the internet such that your customers see you and only you on the internet that is Google, social, YouTube, anywhere on the internet. That's one. Second is if your haters or competitors are spreading lies and rumors about you by posting, uh, giving you bad Google, my business reviews, bad Yelp reviews, bad Facebook reviews, bad Amazon reviews, bad Glassdoor reviews, any kind of badness that's out there or uh, rumors or scandals that they're creating, we can erase all that crap from Google. And thirdly, we have a SaaS product called, called Lily Launch Tools, which is your container for marketing strategy. It can visualize your strategy and help you launch better, faster, smoother. As a gift to venture starters, we're offering a 60-day trial. So please take us up on that. I'll, I'll leave it there. Back to you, Mark. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, meet in the chat if you're interested. Up next is Brianna. Hi, good evening, everyone. Thank Hello. you, Mark, for the opportunity. 
My name is Brianna Bender. I am the founder and inventor of Sweets for Sweet Pets. I help farm shelters and luxury animal owners conveniently care for their animals while away from home via Wi-Fi without the hassle of spending tons of money on boarding and daycare. I have two cats, three dogs of my own. After rescuing them from the conditions I found them in, showed me it is inconvenient and really expensive to properly care for animals. That is why I invented an automated solution that helps take care of your pet when you're on the go. My automated pet suite is patented and the first of its kind to simplify pet care. With our automatic sanitizing potty tray, your animal will never miss another restroom break. Along with the anti-theft wheel locks, facial recognition, automatic sliding door and window, and so much more. Since receiving my patent, Sweets for Sweet Pets' next step is to double the $222 billion pet industry. Speaking of numbers, 70% of households own pets. Over 7 billion people are cell phone users. Only 28% of pet owners use boarding services, which leaves 72% uses a more convenient or cheaper way to care for their animals. What's more suitable than doing it yourself with the click of a few buttons from your phone? My competitors have nothing compared to what I'm offering the market, but everything like it. We are the lavish apartment in the comfort of your home. I would like to offer my angel investor 20% of my business earnings in exchange for $1 million. Once account is paid, I'd like to offer a guaranteed 10% commission of my monthly earnings. I am also interested in licensing my product. So if you have any expertise in that field, please reach out to me. Including this suite to your portfolio is a guaranteed way to maximize your income and receive a forever return. This suite is just the beginning of spoiling and saving many animals all around the world. We are about to take full advantage of those looking to add digital convenience to their everyday lives. So who's ready to give their pet the sweetest suite in the universe? Thank you. That's a very clever idea. I haven't uh, haven't thought about or heard that one. Very good. <laughs> I hope Thank somebody's you. interested in helping you. Okay, up next is David, who just returned to his chair. Uh, <laughs> the way David's yeah. idea for all of you founders <laughs> makes sense from an investor perspective. We would like to see some of you pursue this pathway that David's going to talk about because it makes investor sense. Go ahead, David. Okay, thanks, Mark. Um, yes, I'm David Hirschfeld. I'm founder of Techies. We're a software development firm uh, founded 17 years ago. Uh, I've worked with over 60 startups during that time, a few of them very successful. The vast majority fail, and they all fail for the same reason. They wait way too long to go to the market to actually validate their product ideas by asking customers to write them checks to buy their product. So I created a methodology called Launch First. The idea of Launch First is we create a high fidelity prototype. It looks like the finished product, um, the two year roadmap, not an MVP. And we go out and we sell it to customers. And unless we can sell uh, enough customers at a high enough closing ratio for a high enough dollar amount, then we don't start developing. So we do all the pivoting at this point in the process before we actually begin developing the product. Assuming we get past what I call a viability barrier, then we start to uh, develop the product, but we keep selling and use that revenue to help fund the development. So the process is called launch first. Um, and you're gonna see this in action in a two or three weeks because I have a prototype to help the networking group to make it easier for everybody to make connections while we're in these meetings. Um, and I'll be demoing that at venture starters in either two or three weeks. Um, so that's launch first, and I'll pass it off to the that's great. next We're looking, Thanks, David. We're looking forward to seeing what you've created for us to play around with and see if it works. Up next is Tim. Okay. Hello, everyone. My uh, name is Tim Griggs, uh, and I'm the founder of the Good Sewer Financial System. I'm a mortgage real estate broker uh, and investor for over 20 years. And I, in 2020, I founded uh, the Good Steward Financial System, and we've um, branded the we're branding the the fintech application to help users um, prepare themselves for home ownership. 
So um, as uh, users um, go through the, uh, um, the app, they will be able to improve their credit. They'll be able to um, pay bills and create a, a home buying savings account. And at the end, they will be a very valuable uh, user that will qualify for home loan will be another form of recurring revenue. So uh, we have a subscription model um, uh, across uh, three different tiers. Um, and we are targeting um, the uh, millennial Gen Z uh, market um, to help them prepare for home ownership, whether they want to buy now or a year from now or three years from now. So I'm, we're looking for to partner with, I'm looking to partner with an, an investor uh, that can serve on, uh, on our team as um, uh, either a CEO or a CMO. Um, so I'm looking for someone that's going to play a key role. We have lots of development. We have an MVP. We're on the Google Store. We're on the App Store. Uh, we have a PWA. We have a, um, a, 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 a wallet. So we have a lots of development. We're just looking to finish off this team so we can um, uh, go to market here in the States and also um, in the uh, emerging markets in uh, African and Latin countries. So that's our target. Thank you so much. Um, right. Reach out to me. Uh, my information is in, in the chat. Thank you. Thanks, Tim. Up next is Ben. Hey, guys. My name is Ben Piri. I'm the founder of Memory Gardens. Losing precious memories is an experience that no one want to go through. It's hard to imagine losing your child first steps, your wedding day, or the memory of a loved one who passed away. For millions of customers using cloud or social media, this night term became a reality. Memory Gardens values preserving memories in decentralized storage. We ensure that their safety and longevity. Unlike cloud providers who will forever charge you monthly fee for the data that you will never delete, Memory Gardens charge once for the data right. And showing your content is undeletable for 200 years. Our easy to use mobile app let you import or upload your pictures and other content, such as videos. From that moment on, your content is undeletable for centuries. We offer 3D galleries where you can display your content, elevating your memories to a meaningful story. What makes our project unique is that we combine the permanency and data ownership of Web3 technology with the user friendliness and accessibility of Web2. Addressing this 3.1 billion market, we offer a SaaS subscription model with a monthly fee starting at $3. I bring over 20 years of experience building and leading team, architecting and delivering scalable systems for major corporations such as KPMG US, DTCC and JP Morgan Chase. Our team brings an experience of over 60 years in technology and blockchain. We are currently raising our seed round. Thank you. All right, Ben, thanks. Up next is Chris. Hello, everyone. My name is Chris. I'm the founder and CEO of Gramity. Uh, anybody who works with clients one-on-one -on -one knows that the hardest thing to do is get your clients to actually do what you've asked them to do. Um, you are 30% more likely to get them to do that if you follow up with them within 24 hours. The problem is, is that everybody's situation is unique. And so to do that follow-up, it takes a lot of time. The average is between 10 and 15 minutes. Gramity, however, is a solution that can cut that down to 15 seconds. It is the only mass customizable follow-up resource sending machine out there. Um, I am just fresh off of a trade show out of DC. 550 dog trainers attended this show. 550 people attended the show, not all of them dog trainers. Um, of that, we had 140 interested, 84 sign up. And <laughs> we are in the stage where we are looking for additional investment to continue these shows, which is the highest concentration of our target market. Uh, we are also looking for somebody with significant marketing experience who could help us brand our message. Nothing like this exists out there. And the biggest problem we've experienced so far is people not understanding what it is when they look at us. We actually have to show them. But once we show them, I have had people literally cry at my booth. Many, many of them are jumping up and down because they're so excited that this now actually exists. And I am going to be inundated with phone calls in the next two weeks, helping people on board to the platform. So we are looking for an investor and somebody to help with messaging. Thank you very much. Thanks, Chris. Okay, we have actually back-to-back -back Chris's. Up next, Chris, in this case, Hawker. <laughs> all right, uh, thank you. Thank you, nice to see you all tonight. My name is Chris Hawker. I'm the CEO of Small Software. 
Employee turnover, quiet quitting, and reliable staffing are one of the biggest challenges in today's labor market, especially in the hourly worker market. 83% of restaurants can't hire enough staff, which is higher than any other industry. And small software is a SaaS startup with a mission to elevate employee-employer relationships in order to reduce employee turnover and improve team performance. Our product was built for multi-unit franchise owner-operators, but with the employee experience at the center. Our app provides a variety of convenience tools for the employee and is intended to give them a direct line to management for everything from reporting broken equipment with our Fix It Fast feature to anonymous feedback. For the employer, it creates a multi-channel communication systems, including automated listening surveys that allow them to track employee happiness at the individual store and full organizational level. We were founded in 2020 and launched our product in July of 22. We have focused primarily on the quick service restaurant industry and gotten traction in McDonald's. Today, we're in 273 McDonald's locations, and we're also in 38 Rages Hair Salons, which you might know as Supercuts or Smart Styles. And we've just recently signed our uh, pilot with the first Popeye's store with six stores. Anyway, our customers so far are thrilled with our uh, product, and most of our sales are coming from referrals. We're currently at 24,000 MRR, and we're looking to raise $500,000 in a seed, ranker, seed round right now at a $7.5 million valuation. Uh, we previously raised 460,000 at this valuation, and we've got 40,000 secured so far in this round. And we're looking for partners in the restaurant tech or franchise industry uh, with Experience Network. So that's what we're up to. I'll put my information in the chat. We'd love to hear from anyone interested in investing or partnering. Thank you. Impressive sounding, Chris. Thank you very much. Alan, before, uh, since Alan's a friend, I'm going to cut him off for one second here and make another announcement. And then, Alan, you can jump in. Um, I forgot to mention, one week from today, all women founders are pitching, but all men, please come and let's support our women founders. Two weeks from now, I'm going to be inviting a few hundred, I don't know how many will show up, talented people who have responded to a bunch of ads, paid ads that I've been running in order to try and um, curate a, some really great talent and see if I can attract them to the event two weeks from today to see if some of them might be ideal for your company. So come two weeks from today, if you're looking for a talent to join your teams, opportunity for the founders to pitch you they need, and for those in the audience to then reach out. Three weeks from today, we're going to do life sciences again. And that's, of course, why I remembered that, because Alan comes from the life science industry and any, and he's quite an expert, I'll say. And any of you who are in the life science field, you may want to get to know Alan. Alan, you're up next. Thank you, Mark. And just so everyone knows, I'm the president of the Mark November Fan Club. So please send me all the, the messages so I can get them uh, straight to Mark, because I am the number one fan of the Mark November Fan Club. Um, Alan Gilbert with B-Care Link started with a tragic medical error that happened to the founder. Uh, he and his wife own a breast imaging center. She was a breast imaging radiologist diagnosing breast cancer every day. Actually got breast cancer herself and died from a tragic medical error. Uh, her husband didn't, the founder is, didn't want that to happen to other people. His sister-in-law, his, his wife's sister is a practicing neurologist focusing on multiple sclerosis. Uh, he wanted to start with oncology. So, uh, but she said oncology is too large. Why don't we start with something I know? I'm a neurologist started I focus on multiple sclerosis. We built the software, I think the better way, which most people uh, build software, bring it to doctors and say, what do you think? We did the opposite. We uh, asked the doctor what's inefficient in their practice and what's inefficient is tests they do manually that they really just want the results um, to be able to do. So we created an app for multiple sclerosis patients, tests they do at home that they would otherwise have to do an hour in the doctor's office. Um, so we finished that, we've, we've, we've launched that. There's about 4,000 patients on the platform. We're expanding into Alzheimer's, ALS, myasthenia gravis. We're doing a, neur a neurology uh, assessment. So everything in the neurology footprint, we're not going outside of the neurology footprint. We've raised about uh, five and a half million to date uh, to get the product where it is right now. We're raising a series A, a $3 million series A. We uh, have 500,000 already in. Uh, so we're raising the other uh, two and a half. Um, I've been on almost every one of these calls. I'm really appreciate as being a true networker, what Mark is able to do here and look forward to uh, discussing that with everyone. Thank you so much, Mark, for the opportunity. Thanks, Alan. Up next is Walt, who sent me an interesting, um, uh, I guess, your information and your website, which I just looked at today. And it's pretty intriguing. Go ahead, Walt. 
Oh, thank you, Mark. Yeah, hi, my name is Walt White. I'm the founder and CEO of Newport Electric Boats. So Newport designs and sells electric propulsion systems for sailboats. Our products replace marine diesel engines up to 30 horsepower. Uh, we fit inside the envelope of a Yanmar 30 horsepower, which puts us in a position to uh, basically allow a lot of diesel engines that are on the water today to convert to electric uh, if they choose to do so. So I'm going to make this very short and say basically what I'm looking for is a sales and marketing executive or a business development executive primarily or ideally with uh, B2B expertise. Um, we've sold two systems or actually we've sold one system at the end of last year uh, but we've had two boats on the water. Uh, my boat, which I converted about a year and a half ago, has been, both systems are running flawless. Uh, there's a huge market. It's very early days. And what I really need to do is not, you know, I've got a lot of product development, but I'm looking for strategy because it literally is all about uh, the best way to get our good MVP into the market and get adopted slowly so that we can build up a brand and build out an awesome business. There's tons of opportunity I could go in, and I do have pitch decks, financial models, and everything else I'd love to share with the right people. Um, so please hit me up. My email is in uh, this chat box and uh, I'll put it at the end. And with that, I'm gonna uh, just say thank you very much for listening. Thanks, Walt. Hope, hopefully we'll see you more often here and get to know you and your company. Up next is um, Julia which I see, let's see, Julie, I don't see you sit. Oh, there we go. Perfect. <laughs> Hi, hello. Um, so what I'm bringing to the market is a product that determines the, um, or tracks the structural, the functional movement of horses as a way to detect early signs of pains, pain in the horse as a way to get ahead of clinical lameness because it costs the billion, the horse industry on a global basis over a billion dollars annually. Um, and there's a bunch of problems that lead to uh, horses getting hurt and riders getting hurt because that pain is not detected soon enough. Um, so what I'm looking for, what I'm in need of right now is somebody who can, um, one, help me build a team who's connected to the, the hardware and um, software people that I need. Because I have industry knowledge of the horse industry, uh, very broad and very deep. I understand the product. I, I'm, I would basically be one of the customers. Um, so I fully understand that. But what I don't have is I don't have the technology background or in hardware or software. And uh, ideally, those people would also lead to a source of capital for seed investment. Thank you. Great pitch. By the way, one hour from now, Professor Dave is going to teach all of us how to pitch to elevator pitches. So please don't leave. Stick around for Professor Dave. Um, and in the next hour, we'll try and get as many uh, founders in the pitch. Up next is Richard. Hello, everyone. Thank you. My name is Richard Van Horn. This is my second time on this on this forum. Thanks for having me. My company is called Pseudonym, and we offer a pseudo or alternate identity for the internet that protects your real identity. So if you're a gamer, imagine a universal gamer tag you can use across the web. Or if you're on Reddit, imagine your Reddit identity, which is a pseudo identity being used across the web. That pseudo identity allows you to protect your real identity from you know, all the malicious things going on, on the internet. We offer two core services. The first is an ad-free, crawler-free email account. The second is you can take your identity and go to advertisers you want to be advertised to or by. So we don't think advertising is all bad with all these third-party cookies and all this surveillance capitalism. We're offering a solution where you can opt in to advertising rather than be kind of covertly surveilled. So we have a, a, um, an interesting solution. We're looking for a product manager to help us bring this product to, uh, to the market. We're finishing our, up our MVP and uh, look forward to uh, hearing back from you. And my, my LinkedIn's in the chat. Perfect pitch. Thank you, Richard. Up next is Martin. Uh, you're still on mute, by the way. There you go. Sorry. Uh, my name is Martin. I'm a Norwegian audiologist and uh, I'm a company called the Hero Medical. You know, we still test hearing about the same way today as in the birth of audiology in the years after World War II. That's 80 years with no, uh, no innovations. I believe we owe it to the 430 million people with disabling hearing loss in the world 
to develop a more accurate and relevant audiometry aligned with the technological progress of the rest of the world. Hero Medical Stores product will offer a possibility for audiologists to clinically test modern features of hearing aids. This is not an option today. The first uh, product will be ready for US launch approx uh, one year from initial investment. This uh, product will offer a simple way to perform uh, speech and noise testing, which today is very space consuming. This product uses already developed speech audiometry in various languages. In addition, the device can work as an evaluation tool for hearing aids and as a fitting assistant that can recreate situations similar to what the client describes as problematic. <clears throat> this, this device will also offer better auditory discrimination tests, which uh, are needed as uh, two people with uh, exactly similar pure tone uh, hearing thresholds can have a totally different speech intelligibility score in noise. So we are looking for a lead investor to get a ball rolling so we can uh, the, apply for grants and uh, search. The total addressable market we are addressing is uh, exceeds $400 million. Thank you. It's interesting. I hope you succeed. Um, like to learn more. Up next is Susan. Hi, thank you, Mark. It's a pleasure to be here again with everyone. This is such a great opportunity. Uh, so I am the rainmaker. So I am hired to rescue businesses from eminent collapse. So in the past 29 years, I've helped businesses double and triple their revenue in a few months. It's all about success and driven results. I'm your trusted advisor, your CFO business consultant. So you're either creating a plan for success or you're planning to fail. As an example, I brought in a million dollars uh, to a company that was suffering from growth, believe it or not, immense growth. They grew from 80 employees to 200 employees within one year. This was an international design firm with A-lister clients. They had 8 million in receivables. They couldn't get their arms around it. Their accounting department blew up. There were no operations, no financial controls. And when they hired me, I put in the controls. I got with the clients. And in eight weeks, I brought in a million dollars. And by the end of the year, I brought in 5 million. So I am indeed the rainmaker. You need help, please reach out to me. And my info is in the chat. I am here to help. Thank you so much. Thank you, Susan. Up next is Ramya. Hello, everyone. Thank you, Mark. This is my first ever pitch. I'm Ramya from Cogni Springs LLC. Uh, we are a company founded by mothers. When pandemic started, like all other mothers, I was struggling to engage my son in meaningful screen free time when I was working from home. I thought I could do a little bit more than what's existing market, ABCs, one, two, threes, and cartoon characters. I'm a... Uh, so Full stack software developer by profession. I understand the importance of STEM, but I do understand STEM does not act standalone. You need to observe, understand everyday things, and then apply STEM to it. All of my products explore everyday things, right from food, fabrics, tools, weather, road signs, every, everyday things that we see. For example, we wear fabrics every day. We don't know what we wear. That made me do this, like know your way fabric learning kit, where you would be learning 15 different fabric swatches and made me do, and tools are bigger differentiators between humans and animals, which made me do role for a tool board game. Kids would be learning tools from uh, four different categories. And puzzle kids would be learning all the road signs that they see every day. Things like some food fabrics, um, everyday things that they see, all of them are sustainably made with cardboard based characters, wood ties, wood bonds, with plastic alternate components. I give highest importance to the quality, like, like whatever I see in the real time that can be fixed, like 0.1 inch thick puzzle pieces or 30 mm wood ties for great grip for small hands. I think it's having a hard time. Um, so yeah, so most of the, like 90% of the products are recyclable and comes with white in a base lid boxes. So I have 10 SKUs now. I've developed 10 products. We, I, my first product was released in July, 2021. Um, 
So last year, I've only tried online marketplaces like Amazon.com and Walmart.com uh, without any reps or like retail. Uh, I was able to, and Bye Bye Baby got some of our products last year, which I was able to achieve sales of 90K. Uh, but then uh, this month, I've hired a retail distribution company in Los Angeles. So I hope uh, I'll be going into the retail. Um, so screen free time is real concern for parents with pediatrician recommended hours of only two hours. Now it is in the hands of parents to engage the kids. So all of the concepts are explored through simple board games and puzzles instead like complex activity kits, which still requires the parental guidance. So this is not a one time wonder or 10 products hit. It's like every time my son has, every time when my son asks ask me and <laughs> If I have an unanswered question, I make a note of it. I think how I can make a product around it. So uh, the scalability is not an issue, uh, establishing the retail distribution channel. So I made this with the retail in my mind, but then uh, when I met the educational suppliers or when I see the school boards buying, I found like there is a, I, I see like educational market has also showing so much interest in my products, even though I didn't make educational industry in mind. So, uh, so I'm looking for an investor who could help me not only like providing money, but who could help me both in retail and, and the educational market. Great. It's nice to have you here. Hopefully we'll see you uh, at future events as well. Up next is Christina. Hello, everyone, and happy to be back after two months. I really missed you. My name is Christina Imre, and I am a secret weapon behind successful startups, scale-ups, and high-potential CEOs. As an executive coach and business consultant, I bring a unique blend of experience and expertise to the table. I have spent two decades in the trenches studying human nature, business, and success, working as a serial entrepreneur, and fractional executive, especially in remote teams and remote companies, but also in other multiple industries for various roles from CEO, COO, CMO, and others. What does this mean for you? It means I am prepared to tackle a big variety of problems, no matter how complex they may seem, whether you need help with marketing strategy, board meeting simulation negotiations, leadership development, obviously traction, urgent problems to handle, decision-making, raising capital, or any other challenge, I am here to help. And I basically do this every day with my current clients. So, but my role doesn't uh, goes beyond this because also I tackle mental health issues, personal problems, family problems, because basically business is personal. And my clients are personal, my business is personal. I cannot see a detachment between personal life and business, but I can see a beautiful synergy if you know how to do it. So my approach is highly personalized and I can only work with limited numbers of clients at one time. Right now, my availability is one, this by June or July. And if we work together, you can expect amazing results because I take everything, as I said, very personally, and I'm passionate about myself, my clients, and the success we gain together. So if you are looking for an executive coach, mentor, or a strategic advisor for your startup and scale up who can help you achieve your business and personal goals, please connect with me on LinkedIn because we can start everything from there, starting with a, a discovery call. And I would be honored to be the reason for your fulfilled life where dreams are achieved. Thanks, Mark. Great, thank you. Up next is James. Thank you, Mark. Uh, great to be back. James Lupino, co-founder of Risk AI. We are commercializing a new method of AI training. So if your business involves training AI models, I think you'll be very interested to hear this. The key benefits of this approach are, one, it's non-statistical. It's a deterministic method. It'll guarantee to give you the optimal result every single time. Uh, number two, we can now compress the neural network to a single layer. Mathematical theory says you only need one layer. You don't need all these hidden layers that uh, that we've got to because you couldn't find the global minimum. And number three, the the and perhaps the most important benefit is explainability is built in to the training method. There's basically a heat map that points back to the inputs and and nodes that are relevant. Uh, we uh, were successful using that approach to rank the key biomarkers for colorectal liver cancer in a study done at McGill University. Uh, we're also busy in the space industry through our participation at New Space Igniter in New Mexico. 
And we're in the process. What I'm looking for here is two things. One, if you can help us raise 15 million to get the ASIC started, we need to develop a chip to scale it simply because this is using a different math altogether, integral arithmetic from the 60s and 70s. So the current CPUs simply don't do that math efficiently. And second, um, if you are training models and you have a small model, we can do in software emulation, train your model. So reach out to me if, if you do have a model or are in that area. So thank you very much, Mark. Great to be back. And thank you for the intro to Roger, by the way, Mark. Uh, we'll uh, connect with him. Good. I'm glad. And just so everybody knows, this is one of my favorites. Um, I, it doesn't on the surface maybe sound sexy until you dive deep. When you dive deep with James and the folks that are behind all of this, it gets very sexy very quickly. That's at least my opinion. Mark, right. Mark, Mark, when 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 somebody yeah. says McGill University was involved in it, I'm <laughs> to hear that. <laughs> I know you're a McGill, McGill guy, right? <laughs> well, I'm an SC and McGill guy, so <laughs> good to have you, Jack. I haven't yeah. seen you in a while, so it's nice. Yeah, to have it's you it's hard because of the time, but I'm here. Yeah, I'm glad you're here. Okay, we're gonna move on. Up next is Kaylee, <laughs> who's eating something that probably everybody else is gonna be hungry about in a second here. By the way, why? While you're swallowing uh, so that you don't choke, uh, um, you know, one of the reasons why we're doing the all women's event is because Kaylee's been coming and basically promoting women <laughs> founders, women founders, women <laughs> founders for like months now. So it woke me up to the possibility and then she hosted some breakout rooms that we did, which had phenomenal turnout and oh, then yeah. sort of evolved to next week, which is the culmination of all this which is we're going to have basically a tribute to our women founders and all women founders uh, speaking next week. Anyways, uh, I give you some credit for helping to steer the community. Okay. The so it's Callie. It's okay. You called me the wrong one. Sorry, but it's okay. my apologies. <laughs> I have, it's fine. I do equity marketing for startups. My agency partners with disruptive businesses or things that are go-to-market for direct-to-consumers. And I'm still talking about curly hair care products, even though I look pretty rough right now. I do have two under six and like, you know, it's a school night and my kid hasn't stolen my pizza yet. I was eating like really forcefully fast so Zeke doesn't steal it. So I hope yeah, everyone yeah. really enjoyed that. Um, but if you would like curly yeah. hair care products, I will send you um, a ton. And I would like you to send me an email or message me on LinkedIn. I will put my information in the chat again. Um, the other thing that I was going to say is, yeah, I am going to hype next week. Next week is really important for women, but also because Venture Starters is one of the only forums that allows so many venture capital and startup enthusiasts to be in the same space at the same time, especially during COVID and all of the ricochet since COVID. I think we should really take advantage of this opportunity for networking. And next week is really interesting because um, it gives an opportunity for women to showcase their innovations and also their go-to-market strategies. There's a lot of women that have service providing that they've come to Venture Starters events. So I'm hopeful that um, more women join. And then I know, Mark, I set up a Zoom to talk to you so we can go forever about this in another, you know, uh, about next week. But if there's something that I can do to help any women that are here to talk before next week, I, I urge you to consider coming and not be eating pizza in like gym clothes. I'm going to look more put together next week. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Great pitch. And I look forward to talking to you when we have our scheduled meeting up next is Stephanie. And you'll have to put your camera back on Stephanie. There you go. All right. Hi, Mark. Thanks for having me. And hi, everyone. Um, can you hear me? Yes. All right. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and start. Hi, I'm Stephanie Lindstrom with Rejuvenation Technologies. We're a venture-backed biotech company extending telomeres with mRNA lipid nanoparticles to address aging and age-related diseases. Telomeres are the most fundamental aging clock, and when they become critically short, they can lead to age-related decline, dysfunction, and disease. Our founders from Stanford University have developed a novel drug that uses the same mechanism as stem cells use to reverse years of telomere shortening with a single dose. It's precise, fast-acting, and transient. 
Three out of four Americans suffer from one or more serious age-related diseases, and over half of disease and disability burden is age-related worldwide with no cures. Using our mRNA therapeutics, we can reverse the aging mechanisms to treat multiple clinical indications. Our founders have over 20 years of deep expertise in mRNA-based therapeutics, its delivery technology, and a proven ability to execute. Our experience and agile team consists of biotech veterans and world leaders in FDA, pharma, and clinical trials to advance our efforts. Our first indication is a fatal age-related disease termed as short telomere-related pulmonary fibrosis. It affects over 150,000 Americans with a median survival rate of three to five years. In the gold standard mouse model of IPF, our drug is strongly effective in treating the primary endpoints used in clinical trials. Our initial go-to-market strategy starts with our lead candidate for IPF. We're the first to develop a drug that works efficaciously in vivo to increase mouse survival by over 100%, improve organ function, and reduce fibrosis. Our second program is to treat devastating disorders like liver cirrhosis, which lead to liver failure <clears throat> and unfortunately death. We're on track for our IND enabling toxicology studies and plan to dose our first patient in 2024 with a valuation of over 1 billion, three years post-close of our series A. If you want to extend your future, come talk to us. Thank you. Thank you. Very interesting. I think a lot, uh, please come back for sure on April 12th when we do our life sciences event. Um, and in the meantime, maybe even next week as well. Um, but I need to move on. It was great to have you. Up next is Crystal. Crystal Abbott. I that's what's what I see listed on your. Oh, yes. Hi. Can you hear me right? Yes. Good evening. Hi, good evening, guys. So, yeah, my name is Bash here. Um, I am the business manager for Crystal Abbott, the founder of Crystal Clear Atrium Business Services. So, uh, first thing first, I would like to thank you, Mark, for having me here for for second time around. So, by the way, we are Crystal Clear Atrium Business Services, um, top leading provider of California HR outsourcing services. So, Crystal began supporting the private sector in 2002 and launched Crystal Clear Atrium Business Services officially in 2014. So over the past nine years and counting, we have been working with multiple companies, clients similar to yours, and helping them achieve compliance with HR laws and regulations and increase productivity by 90%. Additionally, we also provide for remote work. So what we are offering is that we are offering for services for uh, payroll, so for uh, benefits administration, for workers' compensation, um, labor law compliance, human resources, um, HR training. So if you're interested to know more about our company, so we can definitely um, help you with your HR tasks. Um, and we're also offering for a limited time for a free HR compliance audit. So um, can you just keep in touch with us on Contact us directly on LinkedIn if you have any questions, feel free to um, send a message directly to us. That's all for now. Thank you so much, Mark. Thanks, Bashir. Sorry, I missed sure. your name there. Up next is Craig. Sure. Thanks a lot, Mark. Uh, I'm Craig Nagasugi, and I'm a 30-year tech industry owner and executive uh, involving uh, both hardware and software development, uh, as well as sales, with EBITDAs ranging from two to Sexual seven million. Absolutely, but, but, and, and we need to be hold, hold on a um, second. Let open me, to anybody. You know. I'm sorry. Can you unmute Craig? We, I, I, I didn't have the wherewithal. Find how many people are heterosexual? Sex? Wait a minute. Is that your? Wait a minute. What's is that your video? No. Hold on. Somehow I'm getting a uh, some. Background noise. Everybody needs to stay on mute for our event to work properly. Okay, go ahead, Craig. Try and unmute again. I have to sort of like unmute every, I mean, mute everybody in order to figure that out. Sorry. Go ahead. All right. Here we go. Uh, I'm Craig Nagasugi, and I'm a 30 year tech industry owner and executive uh, involving both hardware and software development, as well as sales, with EBITDAs ranging in the two to seven million dollar range. Now, Everyone uses login processes. So whether it's your personal lives or your business lives, uh, and some might've been hacked. 
Now, malicious foreign actors are becoming a greater threat uh, to our corporate and government entities, and this includes all of their internal users as well as client data. That's very important. Now, approximately 80% of all hacks and ransomware attacks are from stolen passwords. Now, you might be familiar with the recent FBI hacks, uh, the Russian targeted Brookhaven, Argonne, and Lawrence Livermore uh, lab attacks. For sure, confront it. The colonial pipeline. Uh, I'm a vegan. Uh, I'm sorry, Craig. I have no it's idea why we're getting this in the background. It's Don Stecker. If you search him, if you find him in the gallery, you can just mute him. Thank you, somebody on my team, for taking care of that, because that was uh, annoying. Uh, Craig, apologies. No, no worries. Um, so I'll just pick up where I left off. Uh, or And then some people might be aware of the uh, Colonial Pipeline uh, ransomware uh, hack. Now, these attacks were based on stolen user passwords. So what I'm doing now is I'm leading a cybersecurity company that offers dynamic user authentication, which is different than what they're using now. Right now, uh, most places are using multi-factor authentication. So what we do in using dynamic user auth authentication is that we will provide best in service protection, which will disrupt the authentication world by creating a single use and destroy plat password platform. So what we're doing is we're seeking a partner who understands the importance of next level authentication processes to help us accelerate our growth and exposure to our target corporate and government world. Thanks, Mark, for your time and everyone's consideration. Okay, sounds worthwhile. And meet Craig in the chat. Up next is Vincent. I can't hear you, Vincent, uh, not a single sound, although I don't see that there is a problem with uh, Use me. Use all your lines if you want, <laughs> all right. Uh, again, can my team somehow figure out what to do with that? Yeah, it's what Don Stecker. Don Stecker's unmuting and playing something in the background. Okay, so I, uh, Don, let me find who that is. Don, who is it? Oh, Don. Don Stecker. Don D. Stecker. He might be pressing on his safe bar, uh, his space bar, not realize it. Okay. I am going to. I'm sorry. I'm removing him from the event. And I I just, because I, I don't trust that that isn't going to keep happening. It's too annoying. All right. Apologies to everybody. It's hard when we have almost 200 people in a room. Uh, Vincent, uh, how's your audio? It, it doesn't, it's not working on our end. We're not hearing a single word. What I may have to do is uh, bring you back in later, but for some reason, I we are not hearing, I mean, literally you're, there's zero volume. And it's it may be just the connection between wherever you are and us. How oh, about now? Much better. Are you able to hear me now? <laughs> that works. Are you able to hear me now? Yes. Ah, perfect, perfect. Go ahead. So, Go ahead. so just imagine an AI search engine with the capacity to turn you into a superhuman, a search engine that provides you with unparalleled depth of knowledge about any topic surpassing the degree of understanding reached by previous generations. This is no longer science fiction. It is a reality that has been reached by our app, My AI. My AI packages information in such a way that learning is not only addictive and enjoyable, but also enables us to achieve far more and develop at a faster rate than ever before, with time to spare. Our competition, existing AI search engines such as Microsoft's ChatGPT and Google's Bard, they'll do an excellent job by providing us with answers to your query, but they provide merely a one-dimensional answer. My AI, on the other hand, offers three-dimensional answers, adding depth to the information 
and providing us with a more immersive and interactive experience second to none. My name is Vincent Asaya, and I'm the founder of an artificial intelligence company that leverages the incredible power of existing AI technology to develop innovative and intuitive applications. We believe that AI is a tool that has the potential to transcend our capacity as human beings into superhuman beings. And this is why we are asking for a 5 million investment for a 15% stake. With this investment, we'll hire key staff to help further improve and expand on the product offering, market my AI, and most importantly, ensure that this is integrated into popular applications like social media platforms and other commonly used applications. Don't just take my word for it. Try out our existing version of my AI today. Join us on this incredible journey to push limits of what is possible. Thank you for your time. And I look forward to embarking on this journey with you. I'll put all my contacts, uh, contact details in the chat. Is there a Thank website? Thank you for your time. Do you have a website? Uh, not yet, unfortunately. Okay. I'd be interested in learning more because what you're saying sounds quite spectacular, assuming it can all you know come together. Uh, anyways, right. thank you, Vincent. Uh, up next thank is you. Jeff. Good to see you, Jeff. Hi, Mark. How are you? Excellent. Good. All right. So, um, uh, so I'm just going to start with this. Uh, as as the world returns to pre-COVID conditions, one of the unfortunate events is that we are also returning to the environment that allows for the rapid spread of disease. Normally, this is the travel industry, which is sort of uh, to be held responsible, but more importantly, it's a human problem. When you travel, if you wanna be compliant with either the cruise company or the hotel or the government, you sign a self-signed document, basically a health declaration saying that, yes, you meet all the requirements. There's no validation. Since we know that 29% of people lie to their doctor and over 70% of people surveyed said they would lie about their health if it jeopardizes this travel, we can no longer rely on the consumer to tell us if they're feeling well or not or ill and how. What My Life ID is doing in April, we are launching the world's first digital health passport that actually validates a person's health records against the requirements of the vendor and the destination to which you travel. It will work in over 100 languages. And at current, we are able to validate over 1 billion people's health records through the different technologies that we've employed. The product is going to sell for $9.95 per person per year. It can be paid for in a variety of different ways. We are currently seeking $650,000 in investment, which is a 20% discount against our $8 million Free money valuation. We've already raised 15%. If you are interested, please contact me. I will put my information in the chat. Thanks, Jeff. And before Rachel um, speaks, I just want to remind everybody, 30 minutes from now, Professor Dave is going to teach us how to do elevator pitches. Please stick around. I think this is going to be very useful and it will help us with our future events. Uh, thanks, Jeff. Up next is Rachel. Hi, everybody. Good evening. Um, my, my, I'm the founder and CEO of Trust Elevate, and we are a child age verification and parental consent provider. So we enable businesses. Recently, Epic Games was fined half a billion dollars for mishandling children's data. So we've solved the unsolvable problem online. We can verify a child's age. And for very young children, we verify when somebody says I'm the parent of the child. Companies have to comply with an increasing number of regulations that require them to know the ages of their users. We've been described as the next billion dollar business because we enable social media, gaming, ed tech, streaming, banks, fintechs, any company that handles children's data to do so in compliance with regulations. We're a SaaS B2B reg tech for-profit company. Our mission is to create a safer internet for children and young people. I have a background in forensics, a PhD in tracking pedophile activity online. I work with an extraordinary team of people. They're all focused on operationally building this business to meet this requirement globally. 
We are a purpose-driven company. We're trying to create a safer internet for children. We've been through UK government funded trials. Then, so we know we've got product market fit. We've previously raised 1 million at a pre-money valuation of 5 million. We're currently doing a pre-series A found round at 10 million. Um, please do contact me. My name is Rachel. My email is rachel at trustelevate.com. Thank you. It sounds great. I'd like Thank to you. learn more about that. Thank you. Up next is Jamie. Hey, awesome. Thanks so much, Mark. Um, hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Jamie Van Dorn. I'm the founder and CEO of NeverEnding. So my team and I are building a SaaS platform where content creators and teams will be able to make, share, and monetize studio quality animated videos without the studio. Essentially, we're democratizing entertainment and providing new economic opportunities for creators. Um, here's the problem today. If you want to be an influencer or engage in the creator economy, you are essentially the content that you share because you're basically limited to what you can create on your phone or your webcam. And that means your content is fundamentally limited by what you look like, where you can physically go and what you can physically do, but not anymore. So with video game engine technology and AI tools, we're turning everyone into a pro animator because with animation, you can be anyone, you can go anywhere and you can do anything. That means that as a content creator, you don't have to be the content that you create and share anymore. Um, NeverEnding intersects the $100 billion influencer market and the $382 billion animation market. And just by focusing on content creators, we have a $1.5 billion service obtainable market. Obviously, there are other verticals that we can go into, but that's our first best market. The last two years, we validated that market with some early tools, uh, an avatar creator, a digital comic maker, animated avatars for live streaming. We've grown to nearly 30,000 users, and we've 10x our revenue from 12,500 in 2021 to 140,000 in 2022. We make money through subscriptions and revenue share with third-party creators, and we're raising a $500,000 pre-seed round so that we can create more stickiness, grow to over 50,000 users, and 325,000 in revenue for 2023, and 970,000 in 2024. We have 175,000 of that. 325,000 revenue in the pipeline already. And I'm always happy to connect with potential investors, strategic partners, or just others who are interested in what we're doing in the creator economy. And Great pitch. You. Very good. Thank you. Uh, up next is Scott. Hello, this is Scott from the Cryptops Project. Cryptops uses asset tokenization to provide an intuitive, secure, and censorship resistant method for trading cryptocurrency option derivatives directly on blockchain. Cryptops is currently the only decentralized exchange that uses asset tokenization to issue traditional financial derivatives directly to non-blockchain order books. The other decentralized derivative exchanges require users to install web browser plugins in order to connect to a hybrid off-chain order book to place orders to make trades. This insecure method causes users to constantly lose millions of various hacks, exploits, and vulnerabilities. These problems are solved using cryptops, where all trading happens directly on the verifiable blockchain order book, with transactions closing on average in under five seconds. The Cryptop project is currently over 80% complete. What is still needed is the public facing dashboard that will display the real-time asset reserves and obligations. Also needed is the production two-way direct BTC bridge that will make Cryptops a full Bitcoin side chain. Cryptops aims to disrupt traditional financial derivatives in the same way that Bitcoin is disrupting traditional fiat currencies. The Cryptops project is needing to do a seed funding of 300K to 3 million is looking for a CEO or CFO that can make this happen. This funding will be used to get the project production ready and to provide proof of asset reserve that will be displayed on the public dashboard. Okay, send me a message if you're interested in chat. And, uh, that's about it. That's it. Over and out. <laughs> okay, over and out. Thank you, Scott. Up next is Jason. Good evening, everybody. My name is Jason Turner. I'm the CEO and founder of the Distribution Network. 
And basically what the distribution network is, we are a B2B to C directory and network for the supply chain professional. We provide digital distribution for supply for the supply chain. So think LinkedIn for supply chain. Um, we're currently uh, building both sides of the marketplace. We just added about over 300 um, uh, podcasts. We added about 12,700 unclaimed listings. Our goal is to onboard about 3,000 of those listings to generate 1.2 million in revenue. Uh, we're about to uh, hire about one to three commission-based salespeople. We're paying them about $125 uh, per subscription that we sign up for. That's if they stay on for a full year. Um, and that will help us hit our targets for the year, which once, once again, like I said, 1.2 million, that's with 3,000 uh, subscribers. And um, uh, and that's it. Thanks, Jason. Glad yeah. to see you again. Keep coming back. Mm -hmm. Okay, up next is Donna. Donna, I need to put your video back on. Um, it was doing something wonky earlier, and so I did turn it off. Um, so see if you can turn your video back on manually now. Okay. Thank you. There well, you that's go. all my, my positive energy. <laughs> <laughs> well, good. Yeah. Hello, everyone. I'm Donna Morgan. I'm a 25-year uh, veteran hospice nurse, and I am also the founder and CEO of my company, Palette of Pros. We are revolutionizing the hospice and palliative healthcare markets with a new and innovative medical device, a manual oral suction pump field kit. And the need for this device is huge. We are a global entity. Also, we are um, at any time there are over 1.6 million patients in end of life hospice care, okay? And 48% of them will need help from a suction device. Our product is an FDA registered class one medical device eligible for Medicare reimbursement, 100% disposable and biohazard compliant compared to the next best alternative uh, which is an electric suction pump. And it, they are expensive and they take hours to be delivered when our patients can't wait. Our product is available on site immediately direct from the field nurse's car stock and at a fraction of the cost of the electric suction pump. We have already created and obtained patents, trade secrets, and other valuable intellectual property. Our product is ready to be manufactured and through established agreements and various private labeling manufacturers. So to grow the business faster and to take it to the next level, we are, we are seeking $50,000, a mere $50,000 to get in on the ground floor for, with startup funding in exchange for 20% equity. This money will be used to order initial inventory, um, to advertise, and also to attend trade shows and conferences. So we've been around for 12 years with research. If you go to our website, everything is there. I have a, we have a professor who works with me. He is, that is his specialty in research. We have other markets also. We have the military, medical military, we have, there's uh, um, ALS, Parkinson patients, people who are 
isolated in their homes and um, they are dependent on a single suction machine, stationary suction machine. Our device allows them freedom and quality of life to leave the home, go out, go to the park, go to grandma's house. And uh, that's my pitch. Thanks, this Donna. If yes. anybody wants to meet her, meet in the chat. Up next is Tom Brady, which is always neat to say Tom Brady, you know. <laughs> Mark, can you hear me? It's a wonderful to be here with you today. Good. Good to have you. <laughs> All right. So my name is Tom Brady. I'm the vice president of business development for Flow Pharma. That's F-L-O-W. P-H-A-R-M-A.com. If you pull that up on your screen, you can find all about us. We're located in Cleveland, Ohio. We're founded by a Stanford, MIT, Harvard professor of anesthesia, who has already taken a company public successfully and has three prior FDA approvals. We already raised $26 million from government grants and the DOD Department of Defense for our work on Ebola vaccine and mm. martyr vaccine. We are currently focused on breast cancer therapy. That is specifically because we're partnered with the Cleveland Clinic, world famous medical facility. We have 10 issued patents and 24 pending patents for our AI drug discovery and dry powder manufacturing that allows us to deliver medicine without any refrigeration. That's critical for global distribution. We have signed three significant agreements in Saudi Arabia to develop triple negative breast cancer therapy. And one of the agreements anticipates distribution in 35 countries because we are 100% halal compliant. We are fully synthetic and we do not use any animal products in our drug development process. Lockheed Martin scaled our manufacturing so that we can produce in-house one to 10 million doses of dry powder peptide in each machine that we operate. We have a full deck available. We have institutional financial support. I brought uh, 220 investors to the company and we are very happy to do a B1 series round of 20 million shares for $10 million. We already have commitments for six of the 10 million, which leaves only $4 million available for this B1 round. I encourage you to take a look at our management team that has Stephen Farr on our board who just took his company and had it sold for $2 billion to a Belgian pharma company. And I am happy to answer questions. I will leave my information in the chat. I appreciate the opportunity very much, Mark. And I just out of curiosity, Tom. I know we're not asking questions, but since I have you here, are you going to do a C round or is B done? Yeah. We're not going to plan on any C round because we have access to eight hundred million dollars from the Saudi government at the NIH for yeah. vaccine development. We won't need any money after this. You and you, you and I should get on the calendar together. I'd like to actually talk to you about it. Okay, but I need to move on. Up next is Sue Janya. You'll have to put on your camera, though, in order to pitch, if you can hear me. Yes, yes, yes. Hey, hi, Matt, and uh, hi, everybody. Thank you so much mm -hmm. for the opportunity to pitch in. Uh, my name is Saujanya Mukha. I'm the founder and CEO of My B2B Network. Uh, we are a B2B marketplace and lead generation platform. We help business owners to figure out suitable provider in the market. We, so we are solving two big biggest problems, uh, one with respect to outsourcing, two with respect to lead generation. With respect to outsourcing, <clears throat> We have vetted and verified registered providers, wherein we take the complete requirement from the requesters who are looking to outsource and send that requirement to all of our providers. They submit their quotations with respect to pricing, business quality, and business process. You will be able to see all the different quotations from different, different providers in multiple aspects coming in. Uh, where your shopping will be very productive and can choose a 
right provider. With respect to lead generation, we are avoiding, we are, we are taking cold inquiries and nurturing them to warm and then hot and making them highly qualified and strong leads. We will get you the whole requirement in front of you so that you have the privilege to directly submit quotation on. We are a high impact, low effort marketing strategy for any business to have. Right now, I am looking to onboard technology companies and marketing companies. We have strong and qualified leads waiting for you at your doorstep. Please come in and sign up. Uh, please come in and submit quotations for them. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for listening to me. And I'm dropping my contact details in the chat. Please do reach out to me and schedule a time with me to discuss more. Great. Okay, we're going to move on. Next up is Hart Yang. Hello, everyone. I'm Hart Yang, founder and CEO of Heiko Technology. We spent more than 12 years and more than 20 million US dollar to develop a green scanner just like this. The small risk and the light risk is very, the power consumption is only 5% compared to traditional RF gun for supply chain and the products assembly line. We have more than 20 global top 500 co company customers such like, like DHR, Walmart, Samsung, and RV. Now we are looking for investor and uh, looking for CMO. We also are looking for software partner for America and the Europe marketing. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. I love your name, by the way, uh, at least. Yeah, my name is very funny. <laughs> I've never heard of anyone with a first name hard. It's really cool. Up next is Eric. Hey, Mark. Thanks for uh, having me on here. All right. So I'll start with an odd question. But guess how many legs are amputated each week in the UK alone mm -hmm. due to diabetes? 135. Yes, 135 legs each week. And that's a lot. But the number in the US is a lot higher. What many of us don't know is that monitoring weight is critical for people with diabetes, paralysis, morbid obesity, and other chronic illnesses to help them detect issues before it becomes worse. The problem, or shall I say the opportunity here, is that current scales for this population who end up in wheelchairs often are too bulky to use at home, expensive, and aren't even sold to consumers today. My name is Eric. I'm the founder of Canary MedTech, and we have a patent pending smart scale, think like a bathroom scale but it's designed to help people with limited mobility be able to measure their weight at home more routinely. This is important to me because my brother is a 20 year paraplegic and he's at risk of diabetes and heart failure. With this device, individuals just like my brother and even home nurses can now easily capture weight and better understand when and how to engage with their care teams. Our scale will also connect to Epic, Praxis and other leading EMRs and provide weight data and help flag things needing attention, giving physicians actionable insights to intervene early lowering utilizations and readmissions. While there are more than 1.4 million people in the US like my brother, we know from research and customer interviews that our obtainable market right off the bat is about 280,000 users. And those are the highly motivated ones. But don't worry, the growing geriatric population, people being injured earlier in life, and obesity still on the rise, the demand will continue to grow. And with the cost of sensors decreasing, this is a golden time to launch such a product. We have a provisional patent filed, are currently doing customer trials right here in SoCal and are in discussions with manufacturers in North America to have the final versions made and assembled here in the US. Our team includes two paraplegics, a quadriplegic, a mentor with cerebral palsy and two nurses. Also, we have advisors with manufacturing and medical device expertise. With my background in product management and an MBA, we're the minority owned health tech startup that you as an investor should definitely add to your portfolio. We're looking for 250,000 via safe or convertible notes, help complete product development, cover IP costs, and bring on a factional CFO. That 250 gets us into our first 500 units with a, without another raise, which means we're operating in the black. And the team's additionally looking for a co-founder if they have fundraising, regulatory, or clinical expertise. Thank you. That's a good pitch, Eric. By the way, is it possible to roll your wheelchair on to your device and order it away yourself? Okay, very cool. Yes. All right, nicely done. Okay, up next is Blake, who apparently will be our last speaker of the night before we go to Professor mm -hmm. Dave. 
Blake is one of my favorites in the community. If you guys don't know him, please reach out to Blake. Go ahead. Oh, I love you too, Mark. Seriously. I really appreciate you putting on this event over and over again. And first, I'd like to start by saying, Eric, I may have someone for you. Please connect with me on LinkedIn. <laughs> I'm going to make my pitch really short. I basically wear two hats. On the one hand, I work with a great XR streaming company. We're still in the midst of raising our round. Tonight, my CEO is in California pitching to Bay Angels. We're on track to be oversubscribed, it looks like, if everything comes through the way we expect. But the re major reason why I'm here, uh, to put it very simply, a couple weeks ago, I was able to get one of the venture starters startups in front of the investment team at Honda. They were interested in what they saw. Today, I was able to get another venture starter startup in front of the investment team at Samsung. They were interested in what they saw. Contact me if you have anything that would be applicable to Honda's areas of interest, Renault's areas of interest, Samsung's areas of interest, or you'd like to collaborate with PepsiCo. I have a few others coming down the line. I'll be happy to hear from all of you. Thanks, Blake. Okay, so we're going to move to a very interesting experiment that I hope will become a regular feature for all of us. I'm so happy you all stayed. You know, I've listened to, I don't know, a thousand elevator pitches. I'm not even sure how many uh, since starting this and even before sitting on other investment panels. Um, there, there's really some great ideas that you should be embracing if you want to have maximum impact and get investor attention. So I'm so pleased that within our venture starters community, we have Dave Henson, who is a true professor at the university level on entrepreneurship, and he is going to be presenting now his ideas on uh, elevator pitches, and I would encourage question and answers after that presentation. Take it away, Professor Dave. Okay, Mark, thanks Thanks for having me. Um, yes, this is an experiment, so um, feedback is encouraged uh, at the end of this, um, and uh, be prepared for anything to go wrong. So um, one, you may be asking, how am I got this you know, Udemy thing up there? Uh, if you're wondering, I'm using OBS, Open Broadcast Software, uh, virtual camera, and I'm using um, slides. So I'm cheating, yes, because uh, you should be able to give them an elevator pitch without slides. But um, anyway, let me see. There we go. I'm Professor Dave. Um, I've been teaching entrepreneurship for almost 20 years. I've been researching, teaching, helping entrepreneurs. Um, pitches were just you know, kind of part of what I did. Uh, my focus has really been on all of the early stuff, uh, the early stage, lean startup. Uh, I was early on in that. Um, anyway, so one thing I want to say first is that the advice I'll give is my generic advice. Everyone's going to give you something different. Um, so take everything with a grain of salt. Some things will be kind of universal. Uh, and I'd love to hear from investors in particular. Uh, on their thoughts afterwards, uh, just how right or wrong I am here. Um, but I'm going to give you kind of like what I think uh, and what I've taught students, um, what they should be doing in a pitch. So first thing to know is that your goal with a pitch is not to explain your business. It's just to get interest. That's it. You want interest. You want people to meet you in the chat, as Mark always says, right? You don't need to explain all your technical details or anything about how it works, just enough to get interest, right? If this works, you'll have much more conversations where you can get into all the details you want. But if you don't get that interest, you'll never get all those other conversations. So that's your goal, get your interest. Another thing to keep in mind and I'm hearing this as I'm listening to all the pitches, there are two different types of pitches, and I see a lot of people mixing them up. There's the investor pitch, 
And then there's the customer pitch. Okay. What I hear a lot is people talking about how your product or service is going to help you, right? You're speaking you, you're speaking to the audience as if they're the users. If you're pitching to investors, they're not your user, they're your investor. So your pitch for customers and your pitch for investors are different and they should be different, okay? So I'm gonna focus in on what investors are likely to wanna hear, okay? Customers wanna know, well, they both wanna know what's in it for them, right? Customers wanna know how it's going to help them in some way. Investors wanna know how it's gonna help them make money, okay? Two different things. So one thing uh, I love to say, uh, I, I take the KISS idea and I change it to keep it super simple. Simplicity, I say always wins. Um, with any pitch, remember you're speaking to people that don't know what you do and assume they have absolutely no idea what you're talking about. I don't know how many pitches I've heard where the stuff got into so much technical detail, I was lost. Um, not that I'm an investor. Um, I wish I had the money for it, but I don't. Um, but if I was, I would have been out early because I have no idea what you're talking about, right? So you want to make the pitch so simple that anyone can understand it. And so what people will say is like, can your kids understand you? Can your grandmother understand you? Take the most technologically illiterate person that you know can they understand it? If you got that, then you've kept it simple. So that means no jargon, super simple language, speak, you know, I mean, fifth grade level kind of speaking here, right? You don't need to impress anybody with your vocabulary, right? What you need to impress them with is your business acumen, but that's different, okay? Uh, be right to the point. The more you talk, the more someone's going to find something they don't like, or they're going to pick on something um, or disagree with you in some way. So just get right to the point and be clear about what you're talking about. Again, so this is all just tying in. Keep it simple. Okay. So getting into the content. First, and, and it, this doesn't have to be in this order. Some people will start with problems, some people will start with what you do, but the, these are key things. One, what do you do? Just simply, and this should be just simply one sentence. We make batteries, okay? Um, we have a heart monitor, um, you know, whatever it is, super, super simple, right? What is the problem that you're solving? Okay, this is something that I think a lot of people I, I see missing out on is that they get so involved in their technology and what they're developing that they forget what it's for. What is the problem that you're solving? Okay. So, you know, just, you can give us just a, another, you know, sentence or two, you know, if you're making a battery, what problem is it solving? Is it like long jet bitty, long jet dip, oh, forget the word. <laughs> um, is it cheaper? Is it more sustainable? You know, what is it? What's the problem you're solving? And very importantly, what is unique? What is different about what you're doing compared to everybody else? And what some people will say is, um, what you should be doing here is saying something, telling people something they don't know. You should be surprising people with something. You have some unique knowledge, something that you know you do is different. Because if you're not different, if you're, if you're just saying what somebody already knows, they're going to lose interest. Okay. So what you do, what problem you solve, and what's unique about you. You can do each of those with a, a single sentence. Next things you want to talk about are your market size and your revenue. These kind of go hand in hand because anyone paying attention can do the math really simply. Right. So how big is your market? You should know something about your customers to be able to get an idea of how big it is. If, if there's no clear like industry numbers, 
use a proxy. Uh, find something that all of your customers would have in common and find some numbers, some industry numbers for that. But just some kind of idea, like, you know, if you're selling diapers for dogs, how many dog owners are there? Or maybe you need to simplify it uh, because the problem you're solving is that uh, people who live in cities um, have a problem, you know, picking up after their dogs. And so diapers for dogs, it'll help. So how many people in cities own dogs, right? Something like that. Um, and then revenue, you need to be making some money. Sure, there are companies that get invested that just simply focus on growth. But as research shows, um, those companies are not as likely to succeed. They'll get all the attention. They'll get the headlines, um, the great valuations and all that kind of stuff. But the companies that in the long run succeed are built on profit and a profit requires revenue. So what are you selling it? How much are you selling it for? Right. So you combine these two, right? Market size, revenue, somebody could do quick numbers, 100,000 market um, and $10 a pop. Okay, that's a million dollars. Boom, right? Easy, simple. Um, next, the last three things, traction. Where are you at in the process? Is this just an idea? Have you developed something? Do you have a patent? Have you made sales? Uh, and where are you going? Where, what's the timeline? You know, what? where are you gonna be in six months? 12 months, one year, some idea of where you're at. Uh, and having traction, having sales makes a huge difference. Uh, and then team, you've heard this already uh, today, uh, the importance of team. If you have prior experience, um, you know, talk about that. W what is it about your team that makes you the best ones to do this, right? Because there are going to be other people doing the same thing right? Uh, there's nobody, very few ideas that come across are something nobody else is doing. So what makes it unique for you? What is it that you bring? Okay. And then finally, they ask. And, and as Mark will say, it's not just about the numbers, the, how much money you need, but going back to team, you know, if you're missing somebody on your team, this is part of your ask. So you can get through all of this easily in under two minutes. Uh, so what I, if you think about sort of like a design perspective, right? A design uh, thinking is, you know, tear away everything until you have just what you need. So write out your pitch and then see how much you can cut away till you get the basic points. You and should practice. easily be, it. yes, <laughs> practice and practice, but don't memorize, don't memorize your pitch. Know what you want to say and say it and do it conversationally, right? Um, it, it doesn't have to be perfectly worded, uh, but I've seen this with students a lot. It was like they, they'll memorize their pitch and then they stumble, right? Because if they don't get that next word just right, it's lost. But if you've practiced it, uh, you know what you're going to say, and it comes out conversationally. It doesn't sound like you're reading from a script. And there's been some that are worded well that I've seen people like read from a script, clearly reading from a script, but it's clear they're reading from a script, right? You want it to be conversational. You want it to be where you don't need a script, right? Uh, and you don't need to cheat with, where's the, <laughs> with slides like this, right? By the way, these slides, you notice there's almost no content. There's just a few words. If you're doing a presentation, that's what it should look like too. So um, do I have anything else? I'd like to add a couple of uh, sure. uh, nuances to what Professor Dave is saying. First of all, your camera needs to make you look clear. If you look fuzzy, <laughs> when you come to my events and you are fuzzy as heck and we can barely see you, it's already, you're already, it doesn't matter how good of a presentation you even do. So fix your camera. And if the lighting behind you is brighter than the lighting on your face, there's a high likelihood you are going to literally just be drowned out by lighting. <laughs> so you need to focus on your lighting and on your camera. And please come to our events clear and crisp. 
and make sure that um, your equipment is working properly and bring energy. If you're not hyper excited about your company, why should I as an investor get excited? I mean, I want to see you jumping through my camera, through the screen with so much enthusiasm, and that's going to get my attention. Professor Dave is right. Get attention. Get our attention. Don't sell us on everything that you're doing. Just get our attention and get us interested in what is you're doing. If you can't describe your business in one sentence, then you don't even know what your business is. You, if you need to, you and all, everybody on your team need to actually get on the same page when it comes to describing your mm-hmm. business. Here's what happens from an investor perspective. We get excited by the person who pitches us. We then meet the team. And then the other members on the team describe the business differently than you described your business. And all of a sudden, we're thinking they're not even on the same page together. So get your at least the description of what you're doing down. Everybody who's a founder should be essentially saying it exactly the same way. Now, I agree in a way, don't memorize, but I prefer that you, quite frankly, memorize or understand what you're doing and what you're going to say better than reading from a script. I get that some of you are at a stage where reading from a script is better, and quite frankly, I'd rather you read from a script than ramble on for more than two minutes. But I would personally appreciate it if you will try your pitch in front of a mirror and with a clock and see how, how close you get to two minutes. Pretty soon, I'm going to probably start to put a clock into our event so that we can start to see. I've been trying to avoid it, but I think we're at a point with so many people that are attending that we're probably going to need to institute a clock. Um, what? Well, let's see. Um, the the uh, I agree with everything that Professor Dave is basically saying, but all of those topics that he mentioned, one sentence each, even your team. One sentence each. I don't need to know all their names. Mm -hmm. If you have somebody from MIT that's on your team or somebody who has had three successful exits, that's what I want to know. I don't need to know what their first and last name is. I just need to know the highlights of the quality of your team. You know, you only have two minutes to pitch us. So, you know, and, you know, with regard to background images, make sure that you, you know, have them in the right uh, orientation. Sometimes on your screen, it's going to look like it's correct. But when you come to our events, it's flip-flopped. And you'll need to sort of understand that that could happen and what to do in order to reverse it to make it good, look good. I don't want to, like, pick on anybody in particular. And I and Donna, take no offense that I'm going to use you as an example. But your, your video is sometimes so difficult to watch because it like comes in and out and it's doing all these things it's it's too distracting so it pretty much um eliminates whatever you're telling us what we're looking at is the craziness of the screen flickering and trying to understand whether we want to keep looking at it or turn away (laughs) and leave versus listening to what you have to say and actually i've listened to you and you have something very important to say but you're letting the the video, the lack of video quality video, essentially dominate the only thing we're thinking and seeing. You know, so my, you know, I think that what Professor Dave is suggesting is uh, right on, and all of us need to work on getting our better cameras. You know, better video imagery. You know, like like when Jamie did his, I'll pick a pick somebody else out. Jamie started his pitch, you probably don't even remember, with energy. Big smile, energy, excitement, and his colors in his room are great, and the lighting on his face, I can see him. I actually understand what I'm getting myself into here. Now, I'm, in other words, I'm interested. So, you know, yeah, your equipment is important. Make yourself look like a Hollywood celebrity. You know, I mean, (laughs) if you want to be a star in a night where you are, you know, pitching where there's 30 or 40 other people pitching, remember, you're in a beauty pageant, right? We're a beauty pageant event, even though we're a networking event, you know, because I hope you will all keep coming back over and over so you can get to know people. And that's the key. 
But when it's if you look at the event just as a one-off, one-night event, this is a beauty pageant. And guess what? When you go to all these other events or you go to an accelerator program and they send you off to a bunch of other people or other places to pitch, those are also beauty pageant events. Even if there's only five companies pitching or seven companies pitching, you're still, it's you against everybody else that night or that day. And as an investor, even if you're doing like a five minute pre or 10 minute presentation with a slide deck, and then we have the Q&A after, which is a lot more that we can, then can be accomplished at our event because we just have too many people. There's no way we could do that type of an event. But even if you do those type of events, remember that the investor is immediately after you're done and somebody else gets up and starts talking, we're not even thinking about you anymore. We're now on to the next one. So if you're going to be in the beauty pageant business, which you know you kind of are in a way, make sure you compete. Dress up, look good, you know, um, uh, not picking on anybody, but, you know, stuffing your face with pizza as you're about to talk, probably <laughs> not the best idea on a long-term basis. In this particular case, we know this person, and so it's not an issue. So every, you know, already she's popular. But that said, you know, just think about all the things that you probably want to do if, you know, you are trying to make the very best first impression. And if I can't see you clearly, you don't have a good impression. And if I can't hear you clearly, I'm already thinking my brain's moving off to something else. I'll be starting to daydream about who the next person is. And check to make sure your equipment works. And if you have kids in the background or dogs in the background or family and all of that happening, maybe there's a better place in your house that you can do this. Because I, there's been a number of pitches, I don't remember any tonight, where a dog or some or a little yeah, cute kid is in the background. Guess where my interest level is? Oh, I see a cute kid. I've already not even thinking about what they're talking about anymore. Thinking about, oh, there's a cute kid that's running around the background. What What's going to happen? It's almost like a drama, mini drama. And I'm curious to see that rather than what I'm hearing. You know, I don't. So, you know, just think about those things when you're making your pitches. I'm not trying to be critical uh, on anyone in particular. And those examples that I've used tonight, please don't be offended by that at all. I just think that if we can get our event to be a lot more um, crisp, you know, it'll keep our audience longer. We do lose an audience. I've watched the attendance. And when we have people who pitch who do a really poor job pitching, we can lose five to 10 people just during two minutes. And they don't come back often because they're like, oh, this isn't working for me anymore. So, you know, and as you all know, I'm very reluctant to cut anybody off. It hasn't been my style. I've wanted this to also be the place where you can practice, you know, and, and improve upon. But um I'm not seeing as much improvement as I would like, which is why I want to have Professor Dave come and help us, not just with this, but other MBA business-like topics. There's a lot of topics for all of you to learn besides the presentation, you know, and so I'm I'm trying to find ways that we can build in educational events where we can all learn and move forward. And lastly, since we're already past our, first of all, Professor Dave, thank you very much. As a first effort, thank you. Thumbs up. Are there any questions or from anybody in the audience about presentation and pitching? Mark, I'd like to just to corroborate something that you were saying before. And I think Professor Dave did a phenomenal job. It, it's always keep it simple. I call it keep it simple, stupid. Uh, I have been in a situation, for example, at Microsoft where I didn't learn that lesson. And I watched half the room walk out while we were doing the pitch. Um, uh, tonight, I don't want to pick on anybody either, and I don't mean this badly, but I'm going to heart your, your, your screen behind you is backwards. So you've got to get that straight. Cause when I look at it, it looks weird. And if you, even if you have a fuzzy background and your wife or your dog or somebody comes into the picture or comes close to you. They're going to be in the picture with you. And you've got to realize that the background doesn't wipe them out if they're if they're there. So it's really important that you take all these things into account and you learn how to get your 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 background, for example, 
uh, mirror the right way and, and so forth. Thanks, Jack. I would say, and I know you'll be okay with me saying this, you could probably benefit from a better camera as well because you're a little fuzzy. Not trying to pick on anybody in particular, but you know, I would like to see crisp images if you're pitching for money. It reflects directly on you. Anybody else have a comment or question with regard to this topic? Yeah, Mark. So just one uh, comment. Uh, don't mean to make light of this, but you know, like if you're going to be changing or changing your clothes, can you please put your camera off? Because that's like super distracting for everyone and it just diminishes the quality of the entire experience. I didn't even know that was happening. So Yeah, it, it was happening repeatedly, actually. The really? Guy was standing, yeah, it was like a very, very weird angle. <laughs> and it just, it looked, the guy looked like he was a Zoom bomber, you know, but Mark, you're putting so much effort into creating a quality event. So we just want, we don't want these people to detract from the experience, you know? Or so, from the brand you know, you guys are all part of the, the community. I'm relying on you to help me build this thing and also to manage it. When One thing that I really loved was when people started to spam our chat, a bunch of you would actually help police it and tell people stop spamming our chat. Thank you. If people in our community are doing things that aren't so right, let us know or let them know directly. Thank you. I mean, I need everybody's help in order to get our community to operate in a functional you know, way where it makes sense for all of us. Anybody else have a thought on these topics? I Not on this, but Mark, I've got a question about pitching. I read a great article. It was from, uh, I think, Y Combinator. They had 28 different pitches, um, Uber, um, Airbnb, like really big company. It raised a lot of money. I was wondering if it makes sense to discuss some of these pitches from people like yourself, Professor, Dave, to get feedback that can teach us good, bad, that kind of stuff. That's a good idea. Maybe we'll have Professor Dave dissect a pitch that has already been done, uh, you know, one of these big tech companies or somebody that's already successful. There are some of those decks are floating around the internet. And we yeah, might- Dave, I can send you the link. Uh, we're connected on LinkedIn um, to that article. I, li- I would yeah. be interested in us having more conversations about that. But understand that investors aren't really investing off of decks. Like, again, the deck is to get our interest. Usually, investors Actually, that's are, what's cool uh, about investors, this. Let me, let, me, let me just say that usually investors who have seen a lot of decks, it's easy for us to go through and see red flags right and left and center. So your deck is useful to you in certain ways, but it also can backfire on you if you don't have it you sort of like really figure it out correctly. Also, shorter decks versus longer decks. I, uh, because I'm a life science investor, I sometimes get decks that are sent to me that are 30 pages, slides or longer. And life science is just notorious for wanting to put in all that data, slide after slide after slide. So when somebody sends me a deck that's like 30 to 50 slides long, my first thought is, how much are they going to pay me to read this dang thing? I don't have that much time. I would like to see a deck. I would like to see you guys prefer, perfect the initial deck, not the detailed deck once somebody's interested. The initial deck, the tease deck, you know, you have the ele- you have basically elevator pitches, you have the executive summaries that are one or two pages long, and then you have that tease deck, which has all the colorful this and that and some pictures the team, make that eight to 11 slides. If you can keep everything into eight to 11 slides, I can zip through that really, really quick. Guess which page I go to almost first? The team page. Even before I get to what they're really doing, I want to see what, who's on the team that has already had a success? Who on the team has something that looks, you know, a team that looks ridiculously impressive? Who has teams that, you know, just jump out at me because teams pay investors back. Your IP doesn't, your MVP doesn't, the team does. Somebody on your team actually makes it possible to manifest return on investment. So the team is really critical. We're investing in teams. If you don't have the right team, the right people on your team, 
Yeah, that's what we talked about on Saturday. I can help you or I can teach you how to do this through LinkedIn and other directions, but you need to get the right team. Here's another thing. When I see a team with all stars that are working for other companies, what I think in my head is, oh, in order for us to get that person to switch from the company they're working for now to a startup, we're going to have to pay top dollar to get them to convince to swing over, and we're probably going to have to give them equity. That's not as exciting as seeing a bunch of founders who are all in this full time, sweat equity, they're risking just like the investor is going to end up risking. You know, if you have just team members that aren't necessarily going to even make it to your team, you're just trying to, they're friends. You know, a lot of chief financial officers are people who are working for other companies. Are they really going to be your chief financial officer when the startup goes forward? Are they really? I mean, if they're not, then why put them in the deck? Because then I don't want to say bait and switch, but if you're basically trying to convince investors to go with that team and you've got this team of all these people who aren't really full time or focused and they're not, and where are they going to be when the money, uh, investment money comes in? Are they really going to leave their jobs and come join and roll up their sleeves full time? I'd rather not see them in the deck. I think it's confusing actually, and it doesn't help your cause. You know, it'd be better to say, you know, um, part time, you know, CFO, interim CFO until we're funded you know, uh, make them advisors and consultants rather than give them important titles. You know, big titles like chief operating officer, CEO, board members, um, you know, chief revenue officer, chief marketing officer. These titles are really important to investors. So you don't want to play around with, you know, putting in the wrong picture and the wrong name. And here's another thing. Don't feel necessary to have to fill up in the team so aggressively, you know, because you think nobody will like what you're doing. I'd rather see the truth of the matter when it comes to the team than to, to see something that looks like it's not really what it's not what it's going to end up being. I'd rather you say in your deck, honestly, that with the money that you're going to raise, you're going to fill these C-level roles, you know, and find the right people you know, if the people that you have on your team are literally full time for another company and the odds of them actually coming full time are slim unless we can match the salary of some Fortune 500 company, including benefits and all the rest of it. And startups can't afford that. And investors don't want to be paying for that right out of the gate. You know, the C-level people are all going to have to have reduced salaries until the company is in revenue and the company is making money. You know, I mean, you, you, there's, you can't, there, you can't ask the investors to risk everything. And the founding team has no risk because they're getting paid top salary. Plus they own a majority of the stock. That model doesn't necessarily feel right to most investors. You know, it's not, it's not the norm to see people investing in that way. So, you know, I would prefer to see, you know, um, a, a real honest approach to who you guys really are, who your team is. And when it comes to describing your business, again, if you can't describe your business on one slide, there's something wrong. I need to be able to understand your business with reading one sentence or a paragraph. It can't be that complicated. If it's that complicated, it's going to be hard to get investors and imagine how hard it is going to be to get customers. You know, you customers aren't going to sit around waiting for an entire explanation. They want to, you know, even if you have a medical device, it, you know, what does your medical device do in a sentence? It does now may it may do a thousand other things, but you can't cover everything just to get our interest. Remember, get our interest first. Then get, you know, a one-on-one -on -one where a conversation can happen, where you can explain everything in more detail. You can get on a Zoom meeting or a phone call, or you can have a one-on-one -on -one meeting. The whole idea is get into, it's like a movie. You're, you have to create the teaser. When you go to the movie theaters and you see the trailers at the beginning, sometimes they do tell the whole damn story, which is upsetting because we want to see the movie and not know it. But those teasers, there is you know, I used to be in Hollywood. The teasers are designed to basically get your interest. 
do the same thing for us create teasers now that doesn't mean you know that you're having you're gonna have to do it with your voice if it's a elevator pitch i'm happy to have you do you know nice things in the background if you want with slot with a slide behind you but you know um for the most part you should be able to articulate your vision what you're doing in two minutes just to tease us that's it don't tell us the whole story and you know be prepared and the other thing is is the longer you take i know some of you feel like the longer i'm on stage the more people i'm going to get attracted to me it doesn't really work out that way the longer on stage i get people sending me messages going stop that person it's time for the next person they're that nobody wants to see somebody hogging all the time so get really good at doing your pitch again practice in front of the mirror have a stop clock get at least a sense of timing be prepared the more prepared you are that gives investors more confidence if you don't sound prepared why would anybody invest in somebody who's not prepared i mean we're we're relying on you here's a couple more thoughts just while i have everybody here and then we'll close out tonight if you're a startup founder ceo and you you're you've exhausted all of your family and friends to raise, and this is related to raising money. And you've you've exhausted, and your whole founding team has exhausted all their family and friends. But with regard to the CEO, the number one job of a CEO, if you want to call yourself CEO of a startup, number one job, at least in one portion of the evolution of a startup, is raise money. If that CEO can't raise money from people they personally know. I'm sorry, they should not be the CEO at that moment. I get it that some of you have been the inventor. You want control. I need to be the CEO. I need, but at the end of the day, you need us, you need somebody on your team who has warm introductions to investors if you really want to fly. Otherwise, you're going to get stuck once the investment is exhausted and you're out pitching total strangers again. We're in an environment right now where pitching total strangers does not work like it even did for the last decade. Starting last April, everything changed and things have not returned and they're not getting any better. I, I, I watched um, the Federal Reserve meeting today uh, after they gave their comments and all I heard was the next year to two years is still going to be a struggle. I didn't hear anything that said to me that, that we're back to the good old days economically. I'm hearing that inflation is still a problem, that they're having trouble keeping under control. We've had bank runs that they're trying to keep on top of. And, you know, the situation is not so hunky-dory perfect. So you guys need to build the right teams where somebody on your team with one phone call can get you in front of an investor if that's what you need. You know, again, there's other needs of all startups, but if it's an investor, you need to find yourself people who will make those phone calls and introductions for you. Within our venture starters group, within our community, some of our companies that attend here are doing great. But this event as a networking event is absolutely working, but it's not working for all of you, but it is working for some of you. And the ones that it's working for are the ones that essentially are leveraging what they're doing here to get introductions, warm introductions to the people that they need, whatever it is. It could be a chief technology officer. It could be software development. It could be customers. It could be strategy, but it could also be investors. Because some of the people that you know that are investors may not be interested in what you're doing, but they might be interested in what somebody else here is doing. So, you know, like a like your medical doctor, he might invest in something that's medical and you're involved in something that is a consumer product and there's a disconnect. But you might know a guy who's wealthy and can write checks and maybe introduced to somebody here who's in the medical device business or the pharma business. The whole idea behind Venture Starters, I hope, is that we're going to leverage everybody's networks and sort of commingle them together in a way where we can start to introduce the right people to the right startups. Not everybody is right for each startup. Each startup has its own culture, its own community, its own sort of uh, chemistry. And so, you know, uh, and sometimes just an introduction doesn't mean that you should just go with that introduction if there's not good chemistry. 
My team is probably telling me it's time to wrap up, which is exactly what it is. Anyways, I'm getting on a soapbox and I apologize. I want to thank um, Professor Dave. Great first um, effort here. I want to uh, thank um, um, AJ for uh, introducing the uh, workshop, Investability Workshop to everybody. Please show up to that. There are some other events that are coming up. Um, you know, the uh, Thai Angels has an event and there's other events that I suggest that you go to. Most of these are beauty pageant type of events. So make sure that you're as beautiful as you can be if you're gonna go to those events. That's my suggestion. Please keep coming back to our event and please you know, network, 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 network. If you get good at networking, you're gonna be successful. That's my belief. If you don't, I don't know where what's going to happen next year or two. I want to thank everybody so much for hanging in there and coming again. Please come back next Wednesday. Please come back the Wednesday after next Wednesday. <laughs> Please keep coming back. It was a pleasure to see you all again. And nice that 100 people stayed for my final comments. Thank you. Take care, everybody. Thank see you, you in a week. Thank you all. Bye-bye. It. it was Bye. fun to hear Bye. everybody pitch tonight. Take care. Bye-bye. Thanks, Mark. Mark. Thanks.